Hi, welcome to a new video and uh, in this one I want to talk about one of my favourite photographers. Um, and depending on how this goes I may do a series of these, but the photographer I wanted to talk about is a um, guy by the name of Mick Rock. Now, Mick Rock um, was born in 1948, um, he unfortunately died um, a couple of years ago in 2021 um, at the age of 72. Now Mick Rock primarily focused on music photography, pho um, photographing musicians, photographing gigs etc and he was nicknamed um, the man who shot the 70s primarily because he was at one point David Bowie's official photographer so touring with Bowie, photographing Bowie constantly um, he also photographed Lou Reed, Iggy Pop um, basically you name it in the 70s he pretty much photographed it and he continued that work right the way through to not long before his death he was still very active um, and I recently picked up a book um, which is I'm just going to show you this one here hopefully that will focus on that and not be there we go that's better um, called Shot by Rock now it is a weighty tome uh, weighs in at um, sorry I don't know how much it weighs actually a stupid thing to actually say uh, it's about 280 odd pages it's really 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 nicely uh, put together and is actually quite reasonably priced. I believe on Amazon at the present moment it's going for um, round about £25 and its normal retail is only about £35. So if you like music and you like photography or you like good photographs of musicians it's it's well worth picking up being honest with you and I will leave a link down in the description it's not an affiliate or anything like that I get nothing if you buy it but if you are interested it is a really nice book to pick up um, now that said you probably already own or there's a good chance you already own or have seen some of Mick Rock's work for the simple reason that during his career he photographed something like 40 plus album covers uh, for the like of Iggy Pop and Bowie and Lou Reed, um, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. He also did perhaps one of the most iconic and famous album covers of all time, which is the Queen 2 album cover um, with the four members of Queen silhouetted uh, with the black background. Um, yeah, it's it, incredibly iconic shot. So there's a good chance you've seen Mick Rock's work over time. You, as I say, may even own some of it on album or CD covers. But what I wanted to do um, uh, is pick some of my favourite images of Mick Rock's and just talk about why I like them um, and explain why they appeal to me um, as photographs and to a degree how they've influenced my, nowhere near as good, um, attempts at music photography and photography in general. So I want to kick off the first one and I've picked five images um, that I just want to talk through here. Now the first one is a shot of Debbie Harry. Um, it's it's in black and white, it's a monochrome shot and I really just love this. It's, it's not actually a technically perfect shot, it's quite soft, it's um, it's composed nicely, I do like it from a compositional point of view, but it's just the way that she's posed, and I believe this was a posed portrait that we're looking at here, um, the way it's posed is really quite interesting, um, and it's, sorry, I've, I've had to uh, minimise it on my monitor because I noticed I went very dark then, but you can't see me because you're looking at the picture of Debbie Harry, so I don't know why I did that at all. So we'll go back to how it was. Um, it, it's a really nice image from that point of view. I really like the way um, she's posed. As I say, I, I strongly believe it's a posed image in that regard, um, a formal portrait. But it's just the look, the way she's looking back and uh, away from the camera. It's quite unusual. In a formal portrait setting, you normally have somebody looking at the camera. You may have them facing slightly away. But you want to try and maintain that eye contact with the subject, so it's a little bit unusual from that point of view. Um, I just, 
yeah I, I like the way it's put together um the next one that i really really like and in fact i absolutely love this photograph it's um an iggy pop shop from i believe 1972 certainly early 70s this was taken um and it's it's a live shot and it's unusual because it's been shot in color now back in the 70s that's a really technically difficult thing to achieve to get a decent result i mean I was shooting in the early 90s on film and I stuck with black and white because it's easier to push black and white film to those extremes of speed you need to be able to capture available light images even under stage lights um, and doing it with with film I'll be perfectly honest it wouldn't have been something I would have attempted even in the 90s the fact that Mick Rock got a shot like this in the 70s is absolutely astounding it it's a just a beautifully composed shot it captures the moment the grain in it really adds to it and you've got the reds in the corner offsetting the blues Iggy Pop's just head head back looking into space and you can see and feel the exertion from the gig on his face on his body on his neck uh, and it just it works really well there's a really nice use of negative space over to the right of the photograph and it just looks absolutely brilliant love this this is just <laughs> If, if I could capture images like this, I'd be a very, very happy person indeed. Um, and yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. So moving on to my third one, and a completely different change of pace here. So what we have um, here is David Barry and Mick Ronson on... Um, a train to Aberdeen. Uh, apparently at this point in his career, Bowie um, really didn't like flying. So when they were touring, um, particularly the UK and Europe, um, they would go by train. If he went over to the States, apparently he went over by boat um, and then train again because he was not a big fan of flying. I don't know how that changed in his later life, but certainly at, at this stage, that apparently is the story. And you know, it's... It's the contrast of the two of them that here we have these rock stars in in their gear, just sat on what would have at the time been a British rail train, having what appears to be a fry up on a train on the way to Aberdeen, and yeah, I just love the look, the exchange between the two of them here, the wry grin on Bowie's face as he's looking over, and it's just wonderfully captured. And this is the sort of image that for a band you have to be you have to know the people involved well you have to basically be embedded with them um, and it really shows the work that Mick Rock put in to get to know the band to live with the band as they were touring as their official photographer so that they're comfortable enough to be able to get an image like this you know he sat across the table from them quite clearly here and this is just somebody picking up a camera and taking a shot of people that they know know well enough that they're not even phased by the fact that he's picking up the camera and shooting and keep in mind you know this is again this is the early 70s we're not talking about something little point and shoot here we're talking about a very noticeable camera and um it just the tie as well I absolutely love the tie there it's just it, it's really well captured and it's just kind of like you wonder what the two of them are thinking as they exchange that glance you know was something just said and and that's what i like about it it, it gets you to think about that story and what's going on within the photograph so moving on we've then got an unusual image of Sid Barrett here now this is Sid Barrett and the the story behind this shot and again I like photographs that tell a story sometimes you have to make the story up yourself sometimes there is a story behind them but this is um, Sid Barrett uh, lounging for want of a better word on a Pontiac which apparently he'd sold his mini that he owned and bought this Pontiac and then discovered that as a car it was just far too big for London roads and London streets of the of the 70s hell it will probably be a challenge for London streets and roads of 
now, let alone the 70s. And so the story goes, it was so big and so unwieldy that he never actually drove it, and it just remained parked and eventually got towed, and who knows what happened to it. But again, it's, it's the composition in this. It's such an unusual framing and way of photographing a a rock star yeah it, it's got that excess it's got that you know it's what should be a glamorous car but it's quite clearly not this is a pontiac that has blatantly seen better days it's not well kept by any stretch of the imagination which you know unfortunately given this particular point in Sid Barrett's life probably mirrored the man himself but you know it's that casual look he's just glancing at Mick Rock as he takes this photograph and it just works well and it, it tells that story even with what you know and what you guess of the relationship between Sid Barrett, the photographer, and what's going on. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a photograph that really does make me smile, both for the known story and the unknown story behind it. And then my final image that um, I've got here is one of Rory Gallagher. Now, unfortunately, the image I've been able to find, or the version I've been able to find of this on the internet, is actually really poor because it's the album cover from a Rory Gallagher live album and pretty much just photographs of the people have taken of the album is all I can find online to show you. In the book um, there is a really nicely um, presented original reproduction you know, reproduction of the actual original shot in there and it just looks stunning and it's it's a bit disappointing showing it over youtube like this where i've grabbed the image off of the web because it doesn't show the richness of the blacks that are in there and the tonal range and this is just this is the kind of shot that i always want to try and take this is what's in my head when I'm trying to photograph live gigs, uh, particularly if it's you know a nice venue with a decent stage, so you can get that really black background, that inky darkness, and just the shadows on the actual artists themselves. And just love this shot because it it's Rory Gallagher, who was a fantastic guitarist, just really in the moment playing his heart out there and it just captures that perfectly and I can fully understand why they took this image and used it as the cover for the live album because it it just really 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 does work incredibly well so those are my five in this case favorite images from uh mick rock um i believe all of these shots are actually in the book if you're interested in picking it up but i'd be also be interested to know if you want to leave in the uh, comments down below um what your pick of these five were or if you know of mick rock's other work what photograph of mick rocks do you personally like as well you know what's your favorite of them and uh, if you have enjoyed this video please do give it a like um, and if you want to see more content like this please do subscribe to the channel but thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this take care and uh, goodbye